Welcome to Picks with the Professor, the show where a real statistics professor and his friends give you sports betting tips. I am your host, Professor Sy. That's my actual job title and last name, which is part of the reason why the mathematical model that I've built to predict various sports outcomes is affectionately known as Sideline. You'll know more about the model during the course of this episode set to cover the six best college basketball games and one off the wall games scheduled to be played on Thursday, February 16th, 2023. In case you're new here, check out the webpage on the banner. It's www.pixtheprofessor.com slash new for some explanations and community rules. See the Google Sheet link in the show description for sidelines projections on every single game. Remember, this show covers picks on the best games for the best picks on all games. Sign up on Patreon or Black Book Sports. All those links are in the show description. There are different packages and price ranges based on your needs. Remember, sports are unpredictable, so the discussion on this show is projecting a typical game and not trying to forecast it to a T, as that would be a foolish and impossible goal. We take a long-term view on here and don't get distracted when a team either can't hit or can't miss from three. We'll talk about a game here later where, in the first matchup, a team could not hit from three and how that affects the rematch. These things balance out in the long run, but are hard to foresee for any individual game before it happens. In other words, please understand that good and bad variants will occur. So as much as I'd like to say will be profitable each and every day, that is an impossible reality for any gambler uh cousin jared welcome back uh i have no idea how we did last week and you're on all i know at this i can barely remember what happened you know two days ago i know i know the five show picks here went three and two on monday and three and two on tuesday so if we could just keep doing that like every day it's not sexy but three and two every day would be fantastic i I, I just lock that in i mean i don't know what you're talking about i i I find it I find it extremely sexy when, you know, we go three and two every day. So no complaints here at all. Um, I would also say I as well don't know how we did last time I was on the show, but I have been doing great on my Southland conference picks. Um, So I feel like we have a decent handle on that conference. And so maybe we'll tease that at some point in this show. Definitely a lot of teasing going on in this show one way or the other. (laughs) All right. Well, before we get to it, some reminders, please hit that like button if you're on YouTube. Also, if you aren't yet, please consider subscribing or following. It's free. And if you turn on notifications, don't miss any of the college basketball, MLB, or college football content that this channel provides. I've already mentioned Patreon, but check it out if you haven't yet. Lots of great benefits to be found over there above and beyond what we do here. $3 per month gets you the play of the day. For another $2 a month, you get all the model picks and access to the Discord chat, which is the place to get questions answered about these or other games or sports, discussion about other sports, other games, other people chiming in about their picks. It's a great community over there on Discord. And for five more dollars a month, you get ad-free shows and immediate access to all the picks and shows. Go to www.patreon.com slash picks with the professor for more details. But even if you're not there, we're still thrilled to have you here. Let's get to it. But as always, take what you like and leave the rest. We're going to start off with 6.30 p.m. Eastern, uh, Purdue at Maryland. Obviously, Purdue coming off of that loss to Northwestern. Still one of the top teams in the country despite that loss. But they're going to have another tough road test here at Maryland. Purdue is a two-point favorite. I'm going to grab the two points with Maryland. This is a B-grade pick according to sideline. The model needs two and a half for an A grade, which kind of does make sense on a, on a night like tonight with a lot of games, you know, you're going to be spread a little bit thinner. And so the, uh, you know, getting the win at two rather than the push at two does offer more value on a night like tonight where there's more games than on, on a Friday night, say, who cares if you push because that money wasn't going anywhere else anyway, right? With, with fewer games. Yeah. Um, so it's almost an A grade play according to the model. I like Maryland at home. They're a really good team. Obviously, both of these teams are good. Purdue's probably the better team, but I just think Maryland can win this one. Uh, Purdue, great defense, but Maryland's defense isn't that far behind them. Um, Purdue, obviously, a pretty efficient offense, but this game's going to be played at a snail's pace. Um, Total is 133. The model says 130.7, so the model would lean under. I tend to agree. I think if I was going to play a total, I'd play under. I think Maryland can get the job done and win outright. Purdue's been pretty spot on with regards to their performance uh, in the model's eyes of the last month. But Maryland's been overperforming model expectations uh, by about seven and a half points per game. So I, I, they, they've been played really well. I like where they're at. I like them at home. I think Purdue's just living the tough life here of, of some tough road games in the Big Ten. And I think Maryland's got a really good shot to win this one. Uh, Cousin Jared, what do you got? I love this play. Love getting the two points with Maryland. I, we've, I feel like I've been a broken record. Every time I've come on the show, we've been talking about how Purdue has had issues covering games and it's starting to result in a couple of losses for them. I think that, uh, in my opinion, this seems like a short number. I, I think there should be a lot of uh, public money on Purdue, if, yeah. if I had to guess. But this is one of those things. At, at this point, the past 
six weeks or so, this is the type of game that Purdue has a really difficult time with. And so I think get the two points with Maryland at home. I, I love this play. Yeah, I do remember last week when you were on, we laid big points with Purdue because they were getting Iowa on the road and that worked out. That might be one of the few games that they've covered. I mean, they probably covered yeah. one. That's one of the few that they've covered here in conference play. They've, they, they just have hard, a hard time covering. Yeah. Uh, it, and it, it's a little bit of a whiplash you know, when you're watching this because, again, Wednesday's games are recording now Wednesday at, at about 4.30 Central. So the Wednesday games haven't happened yet. But we go back to Tuesday, and there were those five games that we covered on show that were all really good games. or were all toss-ups. And I made the comment. I said, everybody's going to like the road teams because the road teams are the better teams. But some of these home home dogs are going to win, and I didn't really know which ones. And I think four of the five home teams won. And so I think yeah. you're seeing this thing. That doesn't mean Maryland's going to win, but I think this concept that, you know, if the if the home team isn't that far behind the road team in college basketball, they got a great chance to win. We saw it on Tuesday. If you think back to that, I think it's the same thing here, that Maryland's got a great chance to win this game. Um, should be a tight contest. Should be a really good one. Um, and, yeah, like you said, P- Purdue's – a lack of really just putting teams away has cost them covering. And on a game like this, it's got a good chance to cost them away, just like it did against Northwestern. Yep, exactly. All right, a little off the radar game here, but one that should be really high quality, 7 p.m. Eastern, Liberty at Kennesaw State. Uh, a little bit of uh, uh, Atlantic Sun. I think it's Atlantic Sun. I think it's the name of the conference. Action here. Sure. Uh, we're getting at a small conference this year, but uh, uh, Liberty 21-6, and six, Kennesaw State 20-7. and seven. These two teams aren't that close, though, I think, in talent. I think this is one of the better games because it's at Kennesaw State, but Liberty is the class of that conference, in my opinion. I think they cover the four and a half. The model says it should be 5.8. This is a B-grade play, not quite to that A-grade level. The model wants the push protection on four before it gives it an A-grade, that little extra boost. So not quite an A-grade, but a really smart play here. Again, I think people are going to look at the records of these teams and think Kennesaw State at home and think they've got a chance here. But I just think Liberty is a lot better. They've played a much tougher schedule. They've got a better offense, and they've got a much better defense than Kennesaw State. So I think they go on the road and get the job done covering four and a half. Cousin Jared, are you buying or selling? I am what's neutral? Uh, I, 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 have, I have no, no take. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> passing no take on this game i'll be honest with you between keeping up with the big games and then you know my preferred small conferences like maybe the west coast conference or the southland conference haven't gotten much time to talk about this conference and so yeah i i just pass for me on this one I feel like at this point, I just have to come back and, you know, make mention to the fact that yesterday in the show, uh, I, I did unfortunately forget about Vermont when talking about uh, the UMass Lowell game. Uh, yeah, mm. Vermont's a really good team there, but but I did double check and make sure I didn't forget anybody. I, you know, it's sometimes you're just talking about things and the team slips your mind that, that there are three really good teams in that conference. It should be a lot of fun. Bad on that one. But here, Liberty, I, I think, is really the – I don't think I've forgotten anybody in this conference. Um, Liberty, definitely the best team there. And so I, I think they're going to cover on the road. Uh, total on this one is 136. Models is 136.1, so a pretty well-priced total. To the 8 p.m. Eastern game that we're going to cover here, UCF at Memphis. I'm going to lay the 6.5 with Memphis. Memphis, better team at home. I'd, I'd like six a little bit better, but I still think six and a half or seven is a decent play. I wouldn't want to lay more than seven. We always talk about seven being kind of a key pivot number with end of game fouling. Um, model says 6.7 is what the number should be. Memphis has been a little bit better than expected as of late. UCF a little bit worse, not by much though. UCF has been a solid team. Uh, this should be a good contest. I, I just think Memphis is the better team at home and that's, you know, a, a decently better team at home. So uh, I'm going to lay the six and a half with the Tigers. They play at a really fast pace. UCF pays, plays at a really slow pace. So it should be a real contrast of styles. But even though Memphis plays at a fast pace, I, I think their defense is just as good as UCF's. They've got the better offense. That, that good offense should translate at home and should score a lot of points. So I'm laying the lumber here with Memphis. Total in this one, 149 and a half. Models is 145 and a half. So the model would say under. I'm a hard pass on this total, though, because both of these teams have been flying over numbers in the last month or so. And so that's just contradictory information. And so for me, it's enough to just pass and say, I don't know what's going to happen with this total. Again, model thinks more like mid 140s, but the way these teams have been playing as of late, something like mid 150s isn't crazy. So a total around 150, I'm just going to leave it alone. Cousin Jared, what do you think? So I, I said that I love the Maryland pick. I'm going to go with I like uh, laying the six and a half points with Memphis. I think I would need about five points or so mm-hmm. before I would say that I love this. 
to your point, uh, Memphis plays uh, quick, and UCF has been playing over more more games going over as of recent. I don't think that's good for UCF here mm-hmm. because if you want to get into a shootout, I don't think you're going to win a shootout with with Memphis. And if they're not not, able- not many teams can, they they yeah. are one of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and so if they haven't been able to slow down some of these other teams that they've been playing as of late, I don't see that happening with Memphis. So uh, I, I'm good with laying the six and a half points. I'm just going to give it though. I, I like it. It's not a love it, but but I like it. Yeah, I think it's a good point. Try to get in a shootout with Memphis. I mean, the, the top teams in college basketball could do it, right? But there's just not – there's a lot of teams that can't do it. I don't think UCF is one of them. It's not their style, um, and they just don't have the offense to, to play in that sort of shootout in general. Again, it gets the Memphis defense. That's not bad. I think Memphis defense might get a little bit of a bad rap because of the pace they play out. They give out a, up a lot of points, but per possession – it's not a bad defense. And so, right. uh, yeah, Memphis, uh, seemingly good play. I'm like me. I'm, I'm kind of a, a little bit more giving there. I, six is kind of my number where I'm a little bit excited about it. You want five. So we're kind of both on Memphis just at varying degrees based off of how good of a number you can get on this one. 9 PM Eastern Ohio state at Iowa. Uh, I mean, how many weeks in a row are we going to talk about Ohio State and just they can't get it together? In Iowa, just yeah. again, a team kind of like, I don't know, it's not this simple, but it kind of feels like Iowa on the road, fade them, Iowa at home, back them. Yeah. It's not that simple, but it kind of feels that way. Uh, my bottom line is I don't want any part of Ohio State, period. doesn't matter where they're playing. They could be playing here. They could be playing on the road. They could be playing at home. They could be playing in my backyard. They would be playing on the moon. I don't really want any part of Ohio State. I mean, yeah. they've got so much talent. Um, maybe they're going to figure it out, but I'm just going to stick to this fading Ohio State train. It has been so profitable, no matter what, anything, situation. Um, model only says Iowa minus six, but again, I, I'm just I'm just going to fade Ohio State here. I don't really, I mean, there's a number where I could back Ohio State, but it's, it's, it's high. 12? It's a big number. It's, it's a, a big, big number. 12? Yeah. yeah. And it's not, it's not to say that Ohio State like plus 10 wouldn't be a smart pick. It would. I just, I don't know if I would make it. Like, I would just be afraid that they're going to get beat by double digits. You know, it's like, right. just, it, 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 there's just a smart pick and a pick I want to make. And I don't know what the number would be before I, I, I would make it. It'd have to be a really high number. Uh, laying six and a half with Iowa or se- again, seven, kind of talk about with Memphis, I think it's totally fine. I think it's a really good investment. Iowa at home has been really good they shoot really well at home um and ohio state on the road i just have zero faith in them doing anything useful um total in this game is 152 and a half models is 157 might be my favorite over of the day right here going over in ohio state and iowa i i think this game gets closer to 160 than the low 150 so a number like 152 and a half i think is way too low uh cousin jared what do you got for us I feel like on this show, we talk, spend a lot of time talking about numbers. Like, is this a good number? It's like, yes, you, you want to play the favorite, but is it a good number? You know, yep. fouls. We, 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 anyway, we talk a lot about what those important yep. numbers are. This is a situation for me where I, I feel like for at least a month, we've been saying both of these things. We've been saying back Iowa at home, and we've been saying fade Ohio State. And so could I make the case that there are more valuable numbers out there to be had than six and a half? Maybe, but I'm I'm not going to do that here. I'm going to say that I love this play because this is just two things that have worked out so well for us. And basically take the words right out of your mouth until this doesn't work. This is just one that I would almost blindly say I'm going to back Iowa. Um, To your point, there is some number where I wouldn't do that, but I I don't, I don't know. Like, I I really don't know what it would be like nine, maybe like eight. I don't know. Something like that. Maybe I think twice about it, but six and a half points. No, Uh, I, I love laying that six and a half points with Iowa here. Yeah, it's reminiscent of the baseball season, right? When we just rode the Mariners and the Guardians for so long, and the model yeah. kept just saying it was yeah. about, there's value. We're like, sure, yeah. I guess we just kind of kept playing. It didn't work every night, but it worked so much. And it's the yeah. same sort of thing here. It's just like it's been working. Like, why get off of it? This Ohio State team. At some point, you have to start wondering too. As we're getting into mid late February, right? When are they just going to throw in the towel? And it's just the effort's gone. Yeah. And that might might point have already happened. Uh, I mean, yeah. the way they the way they looked this last weekend uh, against I believe it was Michigan State. You know scoring like 30 points in the game or whatever ridiculous thing happened there. Right. Yeah. You have to wonder if that's already happened. And so uh, if they have any sort of um, effort like that here in, in this spot against uh, Iowa with the way Iowa shoots at home, again, the, the number doesn't even matter. And, and, yeah. and it's like, I, I do really have to caveat this that like, we, we want to be smart betters. We want to make sure we're looking at good numbers and, and nine times out of 10, I talk about we're playing the team and the number. We're playing both. Right, you can't right. just ignore one or the other. But there is that one out of 10 cases where you're just looking at the number or you're just looking at the team. And it kind of doesn't really matter beyond that. It's not yeah. often. We don't want to do it too often. But this definitely feels like one of those. Just let's just stick stick with it um, yeah. until it doesn't work. Yep, I agree. Uh, 10 p.m. Eastern, Utah at Arizona. I'm going to lay the 10 with Arizona. Arizona is just a really good team. Uh, at home, 
I, I just don't think Utah can hang with them. There was a time earlier in the season when we thought Utah might be a little bit better. They're not a bad team. It's just they're going to be outmatched from this Arizona team who there was a time when we would come on the show and I would talk about Arizona had been a little bit underperforming relative to the model. That's not been the case as of last month. They've really kind of turned it around as of late and they've actually been doing better than the model has anticipated. The model says 10 and if they continue to perform better than the model, then I think they can get that double digit win. I don't want to lay too high of a number here, but I think 10 is a pretty reasonable number to invest in Arizona at home. There should be a decent amount of tempo in this one, a decent amount of points. The model would indicate to go over 147 as it thinks 150 points. And the extra possessions and a lot of points just give us that much more wiggle room to cover such a number like 10. I don't love laying big numbers like this, but I just think Arizona at home should be able to take care of business. Their defense isn't that far behind Utah's, and their offense is a lot better. Utah's going to try to slow this game down, but that just doesn't seem to work against Arizona. They still find ways to get up and down the court and score a lot of points. You can blink and Arizona will go on a 10-0 run. And that's the sort of thing that's yeah. going to happen here and give Arizona a double-digit victory. Uh, Cousin Jared, you buying or selling? I, I, I'm I, between just you know pass and like on this one. Uh, and mostly it has to do with, to your point about Utah, they're only uh, one in three against the number of the past four games. I think they've hit a little bit of a wall, especially relative to where they were at, at the first part of the season. It feels like they were covering a lot more games. So mm-hmm. uh, I think my hang up here is completely agree with you that Arizona is a much better team. 10 points. It's just, it's just a lot it's of points a lot, for, for a conference game. Um, I, I do like that. This is at Arizona, obviously uh, sometimes going up to Utah. It's kind of a little bit of trust, tough travel spot for some teams. Um, so, you know, like it a little bit more. I think that's kind of what sets me between the, the like and, and, and lean towards the like, I guess, um, is this game being played at Arizona. It's too many points for me. If this got down, it's, it's not far from being a like, though. If this was like nine, if I can get it less than 10, maybe even like nine and a half, I'd say sure, like it there. But 10 points is just a lot of points for a conference game. Yeah, that's not crazy either. It's just to kind of wait and hope you get nine and a half. Because like we said, the difference between the win and the push on a number like that matters. You get on a night like a Thursday, you get on Friday night, I don't think that really matters much, right? Because yeah, if it pushes, yeah. it pushes, who cares? But yeah, on a Thursday night, that, that might matter given that, again, most people, most of us are going to stretch a little bit thin with all the games, yep. trying to make sure we got money, all the things that we like. Um, yep. yeah, I completely agree with you too. The Utah Colorado road trip can be pretty tough for a lot of the Big 12 or Pac 12 teams. Um, yep. So at home is nice. But yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot of points. I, I think this is one of those where what I've seen, I've watched a little bit more Arizona as of late, feels like one of those games where they just run away and they get up, you know, 18 or something in the second half. So I think um, mm-hmm. playing it makes sense. But uh, I, I I do want to just make the last point, you know, even though the number gets bigger, the value in the number only drops off a little bit mathematically. It doesn't drop off as much as one might think, right? There is more value on two and on three, absolutely, than there is on a number like 10. Mm-hmm. But we always talk about conditional probability, right? We 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 don't think that, that Utah is going to win by a big number. And so because some of those probabilities kind of are very unlikely, they go somewhere. And so they kind of yeah. fall back towards where we think. So um, the, 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 the half point around 10, a little bit less valuable than the half point around three, um, a little bit more valuable than the half point around 15, but those half points and points, they do hold value. They just lose, you know, a half right. a percent less or something. So it's not like it means that. So I, don't, I just don't want people to think, oh, it doesn't mean anything with a big number. That's not yeah. really true. It, it does mean a little bit less, but it's not nothing either. So right. um, cousin Jared's approach here of maybe one nine and a half or something like that is not, completely far-fetched it's again a little bit less valuable than three but not useless whatsoever to the late game here 11 p.m eastern gonzaga at loyola marymount i'm gonna grab the seven with loyola marymount they somehow won that first game at gonzaga uh we took loyola marymount and all the points and worked out really well i'm gonna take them again uh yeah. can they win again no idea uh it should be a fun game i i like this loyola marymount team i think they're really good um they 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 beat saint mary's Right, I think that didn't they beat St. Mary's? Uh, it, I mean, they, they played really well here as of late. Uh, they did have a disappointing loss here on the comeback from that. I think they can hang around though. Seven points is just too much. Uh, model says seven point eight, so the model actually likes Gonzaga a little bit, but the, Gonzaga still continues to underperform model expectations. Loyola Marymount continues to overperform, so I, I'm just going to grab the seven here. I think it's too many points. I think Gonzaga should be favored, but I think this number should be more like five and a half. I think we're getting some value here, getting the touchdown um, with the home dog. Because uh, Jared, what do you got? 
Love this play. Again, something we've been talking about. It seems like every time I've been on yeah. the past month and a half, Gonzaga is always laying too many points. I mean, they're, they're always laying too many points. The other team's getting too many points, however you want to look at that. Uh, I think this is another instance of that. Until I see Gonzaga, like, yeah, at this point, probably like consistently covering games, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to back them. They're almost going to be in auto fade. There's just been too much value there, uh, and it's not something that I'm willing to give up on yet because i still think like you said even this, if this number is just off by a little bit i think it's still off and so i want to be invested uh with uh loyola marymount here yeah well, last week we faded gonzaga they did cover they looked really good in that game uh that game was at home uh even with that cover gonzaga is still about 500 against the spread in the last month so it's not like they've really figured anything out they've played maybe a little bit better but that's only because now they're covering half the time instead of covering like none of the time basically a quarter yeah. of the time whatever it was early yeah. on where they were you know losing it left and right and, yeah. and and again this Loyola Marymount team almost kind of the same thing just a different team home and, and away they did have that crazy win at Gonzaga back on January 19th um but otherwise you know they're, they're mostly they're taking care of business at home and they're struggling on the road they lost at BYU almost 20 points they lost at San Diego they lost at Santa Clara now the Santa Clara one is nothing to be ashamed of Santa Clara's a pretty solid right, team right. um they, they just have not been as good on the road again other than the Gonzaga game which was crazy but they, they beat St. Mary's at home they've been taking care of business mostly at home I really like them here at home um I think they can hang around maybe they can pull another upset I mean they, again they've already beat Gonzaga once they beat St. Mary's at home those are two incredible wins yeah. um obviously they're looking for another one here but they don't even have to win they just got to hang around again I think it's too many points um maybe at home you have a little bit more faith in Gonzaga covering but on the road I I just don't yet again maybe they do and they show us something yeah. and we adjust our thinking but for now my thinking is still I kind of like fading Gonzaga and I kind of like taking this whole Marymount team at home yep. they've been good to us when we've highlighted them here so hopefully they can do that again yep and that'll take us to our overtime segment. Because uh, Jerry, last week you talked about we want to get a Southland game on here. Uh, I believe there are five Southland games here on Thursday. Three of them are model A grade plays. So there's your teaser. Uh, yeah. Join us on Patreon uh, to get those A grade plays. All three of them, I love all three of those A grade plays. I mean, they are really good. In fact, one of them was the one that before you saw anything, you were like, "I want that one." I was like, "It's yeah. an A grade play. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're not gonna talk about that one." It's, yeah, you know, we got We got to leave. We got to leave the, the viewer wanting a little something. You know? Well, yeah. D- despite what it may seem, there are rules on this show and I could not break the rule. Yeah. There are rules. They, they, maybe they change daily, but whatever. There are rules. Um, <laughs> yeah. So instead of going to the south, we're actually going to go a different direction. But we are going to stick with the team in, in Texas, though, our, our homeland here that we maybe know a little better, uh, UAB at UTEP. UTEP uh, started off the season kind of strong, not been as good as of late. We're going to lay the five and a half with UAB. Obviously, uh, Jelly Walker now back for them. To me, this game boils down to the first time these two teams played went to double overtime at UAB. UAB shot three of 24 from three. That game should have never gotten into overtime. Three of 24 is just a crazy shooting performance. You don't expect that again. That stuff happens, and it might happen to one of the teams you talked about here. You hate when it happens to you. You love when it happens to either team, but there's nothing you do. It doesn't matter what read you have on the game. You could be completely dead right, and if a team does that, it's over. There is no way you are either winning or losing based off what happens. So uh, I'm going to assume UAB doesn't do that here. And if they shoot a little bit better from three, they can win this game pretty handily because that's the only reason UTEP was in that game. I think it went by at least six. Because Jerry, what do you got? Uh, I'm going to give this one. I, I like this one. And the reason is, so just scanning through the games is one that caught my eye. And like you mentioned, doing a little bit more of the research, you mentioned how UAB just could not hit a three-pointer for for their life in, in the first matchup. And then UTEP also just seemingly getting on the struggle bus as of the past six, seven, eight weeks or so, uh, playing a lot better in the first half of the season. And then things have just kind of come crashing to a halt. They're having a lot uh, more difficult time getting wins. I don't think that's going to happen against UAB and for UAB, a team that can score as many points as they do a number like five and a half is probably not quite as uh, foreboding as it might be in some other instances. I don't think that UTEP's going to be able to keep up with how many points that UAB is going to be able to score. So uh, love laying the, or excuse me, like laying the five and a half points with UAB here. Yeah. Um, UAB started the season eight and three. I, I think a lot of that was who they were playing. Um, they played Sol Ross state. Uh, they mm-hmm. played Alcorn state. Uh, played us, uh, you know, Northern New Mexico. Um, they played North Carolina A&T. Yep. A little bit easy schedule to start off. Eight, you get eight and three to start with, but they are now sitting at 12 and 13 and just kind of shows you they're just not one of the better teams in Conference USA. I mean, they're not terrible. They're just not yep. great. Haven't been playing that great. They are at home, um, but UAB, you know, really looking to get things rolling here entering the conference tournament. Um, should be able to take care of business. 
and then at that point, like I said, like laying a short number, obviously you like it if it's shorter, like it more if it's shorter, um, but five right. and a half still a pretty reasonable investment in our opinion. Yeah. Uh, Cousin Jared, that's all the games are going to cover then. Any parting words for the year? I, I really need to have a conversation with the other person that appears on this show because somebody here has the the second, the number two team according to the standings in the SEC. And, and so I really need to have a conversation with uh, Jake uh, about that. Um, I'm not quite sure that AM is the second best team in the sec but that's where they are currently at in the standings uh, i'm glad they started playing basketball in january and not like i don't know the conference tournament like they did last year so that's been I, good i do recall i believe last year they got pretty hot at the end but they, um, they did they did you yeah. know yeah they look really good now and obviously their game wednesday night hasn't happened yet so by the time you viewer watch this maybe that game's already happened and so we know it should yeah. be a good game here against arkansas um yeah i mean their your team's looking looking great uh, especially after a really questionable start to the season yeah, I, I'm just waiting for it all to cr crumble down, honestly. Um, so I'm just taking what I can get. I feel like as an Aggie, you have to. If not, then you haven't been paying attention to yeah. Aggie sports Anything. for the last ever, it seems ever. like. Yeah, that is an accurate <laughs> yeah. assessment ever, yes. My, yeah. my first my first a and game as a student, we lost to Arkansas State. So mm. that basically just, you know set my expectations for the rest. I would time. ask the sport, but I don't think it really matters. I, I'm assuming You're football, right. it, doesn't, it doesn't matter. Yeah, it was, fo it was football, but this yeah. wasn't, this wasn't like our Arkansas state. This was like yeah. our parents, Arkansas state. Um, <laughs> so yeah, it, it was very bad. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, that's all that we got for you today. Thanks for tuning into this episode of Picks with the Professor. Don't forget to subscribe so you can enjoy all the sports betting content provided on this channel. It's dropped right into your feed. Be back again tomorrow with more college basketball betting tips. And until then, as always, best of luck. And remember, you can eat your betting money, but please don't bet your eating money.